In this lesson, we shall focus on Mathematics 1B, Math 1 for 1, Tutorial 8, um, Power Series. And uh, we actually will do the first question where we need to confirm the integration formula um, of the following series using appropriate Maclaurin series. Now, at this point, to confirm these, you need to recall. Right, you need to recall that Whenever we speak about the trigonometric sine of x, it is the infinite series from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the nth power. We can also use k, which is so popular in this course, meaning it is minus 1 to the kth power. And then we have x to the power 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. Okay, next. So now we also have another um, formula that we use for the cosine function. And the cosine becomes, starts from k equals zero, and uh, we have minus one to the k, and we have x to the power 2k divided by 2k factorial. And therefore, this is what we have. But now you need to think about this and make sure you understand this. Okay, what exactly do we need? Recall that that is the case so that then whenever you have the integral of the sine of x dx, you would actually therefore be integrating the following, let's do it in blue color. So the sign is the infinite series. Your, okay, this thing you can do it term by term or you can integrate the summation in sigma notation. So that the sign becomes from k equals zero up to infinity. And then we have minus one to the kth power, x to the power two k plus one. And you divide by, 2k plus 1 factorial, and then we have a dx like this. Right, so we need to actually exactly integrate this, but to integrate this with ease, we need to do the following. So you put the integral sign and then substitute k equals 0. And when you substitute k equals 0, minus 1 to the power 0 becomes a 1, x to the power 2 by 0 plus 1 is x to the 1 divided by 1, giving us x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x 5 over 5 factorial. And then now you have these and minus and so on. And then you have dx. So what is this? If you integrate this, then you would actually obtain exactly the following, right? So you would have exactly x squared over 2 if you integrate the x. And then if you integrate the x cubed, you're going to get what? You're going to get x to the fourth power divided by 4 by 4 by 3 factorial. And the 3 factorial is actually, so it's 4 by 3 factorial, yeah? Like this. And then you have plus, you integrate this one, is x to the 6th power, 6 by 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. Okay. So now, in the end... What exactly is this? Now, this can be actually exactly seen as the following. So it becomes x squared over 2. These two you can write it as 2 factorial minus x to the fourth power divided by 4 factorial. And then, uh, because 4 times 3 factorial is 4 factorial, x uh, to the power 6 divided by 6 factorial, because it is 6 times 5 factorial, which is 6 factorial. 
And then you go on and on. But this is exactly the same as the infinite series from k equals zero to infinity. Now, if you do the following thing, and uh, you are able to get exactly the result you have here, and you integrate these very, very carefully. Obviously, when you integrate these, what are you able to get? After the integration, you need to add a constant of arbitrary constant of integration C. plus C, plus C. Sorry. Yes, please. Yes, um, may I ask? Oh, I had muted issues right there. So, um, since uh, you removed the T factorial, I got lost at that step. You see where you said x to the power 4 over 4 times 3 factorial, then when you... Taking the second step, like I got lost. Okay, that's fine. Because we know that. Uh, what is 4 factorial? 4 factorial is 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. So we can decide to stop in the middle. So we can decide to say 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial. Then we stop at 3 factorial because 3 factorial is like 3 times 2 times 1. So if you say 4 times 3 factorial is the same as 4 factorial. Right. So in other words, from the fact that n factorial is... Uh, okay, I know that it's, it's, it's a slot for the school kids. That's why the reason why I'm, I'm letting them join the... Okay, um, normally later on they don't join. So n factorial now is going to be actually n, n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so you have n, n minus 1 factorial. So now, then you will get what? So n, n minus 1 factorial uh, is the same as n factorial. Yet, n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on up to 3, 2, 1. Uh, exactly that way right exactly that way there so that then in the end you'll able to get you'll be able to get the following thing be able to get the following thing so that in the end what then you are able to get is the fact that four factorial is four times three factorial but at the same time Whenever we have like 6 times 5 factorial, we know that 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, that is 6 factorial. It's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But the 5 factorial is 6 times 5 factorial. Okay, 6 times 5 factorial is 6 factorial. Okay. And then, obviously, at that point, uh, you will actually be in a position to get exactly that expression. Right. So, you would look at, um, therefore, the fact that this is what you are able, were able to achieve. So, if we actually are, are able to achieve this, what, therefore, are the corresponding series that we actually can be able to uh, achieve out of this? Right, so if you look at the fact that if you integrate um, the sine of x, right, and you realize that it is actually minus cosine x, and it is minus cosine x plus c, okay, we're going to discuss these things in detail, minus cosine x plus c, and uh, we are actually using Maclaurin series, right? Using Maclaurin series, we're going to discuss uh, exactly uh, this here. We're going to discuss exactly this here. Okay, right, 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 right. Let us look at this very carefully. But when you integrate the sine, you get the cosine. You get exactly the cosine. Okay. But also, 
if you then integrate very carefully, okay, if, if you integrate the sine and squeeze, you get minus cosine. Right, you get actually exactly your minus cosine there. And then if you get minus cosine, what then exactly is this? As a matter of fact, what exactly do you have is this here? So you're going to have the fact that all these powers are even powers. So now you'd get that in the beginning, you would have what? In the beginning, you'd have, we have an x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the fourth. So this x squared is associated with what? Over 2 factorial is associated with, a, with k equals 1. k equals 1, k equals 2, and then k equals uh, 3, and so on and so forth. But whenever k equals 1, you would have to factor out uh, the negative because k equals 1 would have a negative. So in other words, you'd have the following. The integral of the sine x dx is then the same. Is this one x squared over 2 factorial minus x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the fourth power over 4 factorial. And then plus x to the sixth power over 6 factorial, and so on. And then you add c, arbitrary constant of integration. But you realize that if you remember very well, the cosine x becomes the infinite series. From k equals 0 to minus 1 to the kth power, x to the 2k, 2k plus 1. So when k is 0, so now this one would be corresponding with 1. And then when k is 2, you would need a positive. So you need to factor out a negative here. When you factor out the negative, then it's going to be exactly minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th power over 2 factorial minus x to the 6th power over 6 factorial plus and so on. And then you add c. Like that. So now, what then is this thing that we're getting here? So, but you realize that when you compare, because you must compare, right? When you compare these Maclaurin series, there are a couple of things that remain important. So here, when you put k equals zero, it's going to become what? This cosine series. It's going to become one, one, and everything is going to become one. And then you put 1, it becomes minus x squared over 2 factorial. You put 2, it's x to the 4th over 4 factorial. You put 3, x to the 6th over 6 factorial. And so on and so forth. Okay. So now... Okay, so we continue, right, we continue. Now, what then exactly does this give us? What then exactly does this give us? So, this is the cosine series, but what is the sine series? What exactly is the sine 
um, the cosine x McLaurin series versus the sine x McLaurin series. Right, so you realize, therefore, that the cosine x McLaurin series is exactly this one here. Simultaneously, the sine x Okay, why did you take the negative as a common factor? We took the negative as a common factor because when you look at the cosine x, the coefficient of x squared over 2 factorial is negative. But here it was positive. And the coefficient of x to the power 4 in the Maclaurin series is positive. But yeah, so it was negative here, but we need to make it positive. The coefficient of x to the power 6 is positive in the integral. But in the Maclaurin series, it must be the coefficient of x to the power 6 must be negative. So you can see that the signs are the opposites of what we see in the cosine x. Because in the, in, in the Maclaurin series of cosine x, the coefficient of x squared in the Maclaurin series is negative. But here it's positive. The one of x to the power 4 here is positive. But here it's negative. The coefficient of x to the power 6 is positive, but here it must be negative. So it, 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 it's necessary, therefore, to extract, to factor out a what? To factor out a negative. To factor out a negative. Next. There is still a, a, a trick here. There's still a trick there. So 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial. x to the 6 over 6 factorial. So you can put... Let us put something... So what do we want to achieve? Now, when you get to this point, we have negative outside. But if we want to get cosine, there must be 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth power over 4 factorial minus x. To the... So we need a 1, but there's no 1 here. So you must put a 1. But you must subtract another 1. So that is 1 minus 1. And then there is x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th power of 4 factorial x to the 6th over 6 factorial okay so with this okay so now next Okay, so what I would say here would be that the 1 minus 1 is 0. Why do we put the 1 minus 1? We need a 1 to have cosine x. We need a 1. And then now we can have this minus. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And then now you, this negative times negative is going to be a plus. So there's a plus 1 plus C. If, if we wish, we can put this, we can make this C1. So that now we have minus. So what is 1 minus x squared okay that's a really just load for the for the matrix so i'm very flexible now just allowing the matrix to just join in and and be part of the team uh just to observe how learning happens because they need to see how online learning happens 
So what is one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth power over four factorial minus x to the sixth power? This one minus x squared up to minus x to the sixth power is the cosine. So that so you have minus cosine x plus c so that now we can then say the c is 1 plus c1 so now here we then say the c becomes equal to 1 plus c1 All right, so one plus two one. So right now, when you have the integral of sine x dx, which is plus this. So the integral of the sine x is equal to minus cosine x dx. Okay. So now think about it and make sure you understand this one. Um, because uh, it is... Uh, okay, how do you know this answer is correct? How do you know? Because you can take this answer and differentiate the answer. So if you differentiate the answer, you get back what we call the integrand. You get back what we call the integrand. Now, this is uh, the integrand. D, dx. So that we have minus. So now you have x to the fourth power of the fourth factorial. You differentiate the answer. So if you get dx of the answer, then you will get back the function what that was integrated. Plus dot dot dot. Okay, so you'd have to add so one plus C one. So now when you int when you find a derivative of this, what is the derivative of this? So now the derivative of the 1 plus C1, one, the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of the, of the C1 is also 0 because that's a constant. And then if you find the derivative of this, it becomes what? So the derivative of the 1 becomes 0. The derivative of the, so you'd have a minus D with the bracket, the derivative of the minus x squared is minus x. The derivative of this one is what? Is plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And therefore, the derivative, okay, I'm so sorry that I lost you. The derivative, I'm so sorry that I lost you there. Okay, so that now you have the derivative here, which is uh, the derivative of this one, which is x to the power 5 over 5 factorial. And then, and so on. When you multiply through by the negative, it becomes exactly x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth power over five factorial the x minus x cubed minus that the x minus x cubed over that plus x to the fifth power over that is actually the sign so this becomes the sign of x so that when you differentiate this answer you get back the sign 
you're able to get back the sign of X. And therefore, this therefore becomes the answer to this question. It becomes the answer to this question. This discussion is being recorded. We're going to repeat these questions because now we are just practicing, but we want to repeat these questions. So you must not stress too much. You want to repeat, we're going to play around with these questions because uh, they are very, very interesting. They're very, very interesting. So we continue. Now, in part two, now we are dealing with what we call power series. Right, so dealing with power series, we're looking at the limit of an indeterminate form as x approaches x0 can often be found by using series representations in powers of x minus x0. So now at this point, You would actually, therefore, uh, have the following observation. Okay. So the limit of, a, of an indeterminate form as x approaches x0 can often be found by using series representations in powers of x minus x0 of functions involved. Using this method to find the following limits. Using this method to find the following limits. Remember, they're giving you a hint. They're saying the limit of an indeterminate form as x approaches x0 can often be found by using um, series representations. <laughs> okay, which topic are we doing, Nape? We're doing power series. Nape, because you are still growing, this is engineering mathematics. This is engineering maths. Okay, what we're discussing is engineering maths. I know that maybe your head is spinning, Nape. You are like, okay, what am I seeing here? Okay, uh, I just kept you in the class because I didn't want, I, I wanted, because you are a new person, you have not been participating. So I just decided that uh, you must have a chance to to see the things. But I know very well that you are, you are, um, you are in school? Okay. So now, there are things you call indeterminate forms. What are the indeterminate? Let us talk about indeterminate. Indeterminate form. Zero, zero, infinity over infinity. These are indeterminate forms. Infinity minus infinity. So there's that indeterminate form, there's that one, there's also that one. Okay, so these are the so the limits or the limit of an indeterminate form can often be found by using series representations in powers of these. As x approaches x zero, we're gonna discuss these things, please. Okay, the way to understand this is tr is to try and understand the examples we've done, and then we shall do more examples. Okay, that is what we're gonna do. So at this point, we need to find because this one x approaches zero so we must find a series representation of e to the power x squared but we know that the series representation of e to the power x squared is the infinite series of k equals zero one over k factorial x squared okay we start like this what is the series represent representation of e to the power x okay 
the series represent, representation of e to the power x is the same as 1 over k factorial x to the power n. Yes, I know very well. But now, because um, it's your first time to join, that is the reason why you are you have a chance to see some engineering um, 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 nappy. So that now, if you replace x by x squared, what are you able to achieve? So you'll achieve 1 over k factorial x to the power 2 and then n, like this. In which case, the e to the power x squared becomes the infinite series k equals 0, 1 over k factorial, x to the power 2k. x to the power 2k. So, so now we have this. Okay, now let's come to this. So to get this one, it's easy. We're going to do this one because Nape is, is surprised. He's saying, what, chop, what topic is this? <laughs> Nape, this is engineering, mathematics. So now we are beginning to see big things, you see? But you are just not joining the lessons and that is the issue with nape right so at this point there you would have the the limit as x approaches zero and then now there is e to the x squared okay <laughs> all right nape that's okay so now, when you have, therefore, this particular series here, so the e to the power x squared is this one. What is the e to the power x squared? It is the infinite series, k equals 0, 1 over k factorial, x to the power 2k, Minus 1 minus x squared. You divide by x to the power 4. Okay, so now, in the place of e to the power x squared, we put the infinite series. We put the infinite series. So that now you have the limit as x approaches 0. Okay, as x approaches zero. Okay, so now, okay, so now, um, okay, now you'd have the following. So now you'd have, uh, obviously, the following result. Um, all right, so. Okay. Let us uh, substitute everything here. When k is 0 here, it's 1 over 0 factorial x to the power 0, which is 1 plus, when k is 1, x squared. When k is 2, 2 factorial x squared. When k is 3, when k is 3, So that we have x to the fourth power. 
sorry. Yes, please. In the part where you said um, all x is to the power two or oh, two factorial, isn't it supposed to be x to the power four, two factorials? You're so smart. <laughs> x to the power four. Well done. X to the power 4, and the rest is okay. Then everything is fine. And then now when you put 3, then it's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. You're okay. You, you agree now. I'm happy that you are following. I'm glad that you are following, right? So, there is 1 minus 1. X squared minus X squared. So then what are we left with here? So we are left with the following. You can write it up here. So we're then left with uh, the fact that this equals the limit. As x approaches 0, 1 over 2 factorial x to the fourth power. 1 over 3 factorial x to the 6th power. You divide by x to the power 4. Good. Which is x to the 4th power. 1 over 2 factorial. 1 over 3 factorial x squared. So now, we have the following. Which is 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, x squared. Okay, so this is then equal to as x approaches uh, 0, this one is going to be 0, leaving us with 1 over 2 factorial, but 1 over 2 factorial is 2. So the answer is 1 half. Okay, here it is. They gave us the answer. So we're able to get the answer there. We're able to get the answer. So the trick was actually noting that you have the following, yeah? The trick was noting that you have e to the power x, and e to the power x is the infinite series from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial x to the power n. So this we already know for the exponential function of x. And the e to the power x squared then is the k equals 0, to infinity, 1 over k factorial x squared k, which is 1 over k factorial x to the power 2k. And then if you write it out, it's going to be exactly that one. It's going to be exactly that one. And then if you write, you have 1 minus 1, and then x squared minus x squared, and therefore um, the answer becomes 1 half, we... Went to, through the way here, there, and then we went. Okay, we are supposed to connect these from e to the power x. What is the power series? The power series of e to the power x is the summation from k equals zero to infinity of one over k factorial x to the power n. Oh, yeah, obviously x to the power k, yeah. And then now, wherever that is x, you put x squared here. You put x squared, and then you also put what? You also put x squared. Wherever there is x, you put x squared, and then you also put x squared. So that's what we get. So that becomes the for the answer. Right. That is what we're supposed to do. That is what you're supposed to do.
Okay, any question on this one? Try to make sure you understand it, you know, try to make sure you understand. And then we're going to move to part B and see what you can do in part B and see what we can do in part B right and see what we can do in part B and see what we can do in part B So that is what we have. Um, Right, so we move on to the next question. Okay, let us look at part B, this one. What do we do here? What do we do here? So now we need to find the series of this one. We need to find the series of the lean of that. Right, so obviously the lean of that is something that was done before, but also you have you had a chance to Right. So you have the following. So you'd have the following. Yeah, let us look at this one. So, right, so you'd have the lean X power series. So the question we ask is what is the power series of lean X? Right, the power series of lin x. Right, you need to note that whenever you have in the part B, lin x is the infinite series of k equals 1 Minus 1 to the k plus 1. k. x minus 1 to the power k. So... When k is 1, which is x minus 1, you put 2 
x minus 1 squared, you put, okay, yeah, you, you think about this. If you put 1, you get that. You put 2, so this becomes a negative, yeah? Becomes exactly negative. Then you put 3. You put 3. 3 is going to be 4 here, giving us 3 over 3. And then you put a 4. And this is going to be negative. Okay. So now we come to the learn. So now if this is the formula, then we can do the learn. We're going to do the learn of one plus that. Which is exactly what? Which is exactly x squared minus one. x squared so wherever there is x what do you put here <laughs> wherever there is x you put 1 plus x squared let's just make sure we write the correct thing here so wherever there is uh, x you put 1 plus x squared in this so there's x here and then you're going to put 1 plus x squared minus 1. Wherever there is x, you put 1 plus x squared minus 1. Wherever there is x, you put 1 third. 1 plus x squared minus 1. which is x squared. Which is x to the fourth power. Over three and so on. So let us, yeah, then we're done. Because it means that for whenever you have the lean of that, it becomes what? It becomes exactly that. Okay, now we are then in business. Then we want to find the limit as x approaches zero of the lean of one plus x squared minus x squared divided by x to the fourth power. The limit as x approaches zero. Okay, now when you have the limit, the, the lean of one plus x squared, this is the lean. So it is uh, the same as uh, x squared minus one half x to the fourth power plus x sixth power out of three and so on. That is the lean of this, but you minus x squared. Everything is divided by x to the fourth power. This gives us the limit as x approaches zero. Okay, by good luck, then everything is simplifying very, very nicely because the x squared and the minus x squared cancel out. 
giving us minus one half x to the fourth power plus x to the sixth power out of three. And then you divide by the x to the fourth power. So you divide by x to the power four, you divide by x to the power four. And if this is the case, it becomes the limit x, as x approaches zero. So, plus 1 over 3 factorial x squared, which is minus 1 half So now, this becomes minus one half. Voila. There it is. We got it. Eureka. Right. So there it is. We got it. And we say Eureka. We say Eureka. Right. We say Eureka. We got it. Eureka. Okay, think about this one, but this one uh, hinges on the knowledge of the hinges on the knowledge of the right. It hinges on the knowledge of the greetings and happy Sunday to you all. brother in the Lord. Right, so we continue. On the five daily routines that we ought to practice on a daily basis. Okay, any question? Please think about it and make sure you understand this. Need to make sure that you understand this. Right. We continue. We continue. We continue. Any question? Let us try the next one, C. Let us try C. Right, in trying C, we can see that we're just using series that are known for the exponential function and also for the natural log. And also for the natural log. And also for the natural log. So we continue.
which is octane y minus which is y cubed cosine y Right, so this is what we have. So now the question is going to become our lives. Right. So now we have this. So the question is what then can we do here? So there are certain series of representations we need to remember. There are certain series of representations you need to remember. Right, so okay, right, you have the Maclaurin series of the arc tangent. So you remember that arc tan x. It's x minus x cubed over 3 minus and so on. So which is octan which is plus x to the fifth power over five x to the seventh power over seven and so on. So that becomes the that becomes exactly what we're getting there. Okay, we continue. So now, yeah, yeah, so it's similar to sine x, yeah, well done. So it, it is similar to sine x, but it's just that the sine has factorials. The sine has factorials, but the octant does not have any factorials. But these are similar. And so now well done for realizing that, meaning that simultaneously here, you'd remember that the sine y, Okay, yeah. So we can put a Y here everywhere. We can put a Y. We can put a Y. So right now, the sign of Y.
becomes the argument here exactly y minus this. And then now also here you'd have y minus y cubed over 3 factorial y to the 5th over 5 factorial y to the 7th no <laughs> okay so the sign obviously is like that and you write clearly here but the signs alternate so it's similar to the the octane is similar to the sign, but the signs alternate. Okay, so that it's a limit. Okay, so you have this. So that then in the end, what we're getting here yes, it does alternate, yeah? It does alternate because it's positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. Right, so it does indeed alternate. Okay, let me take this call of these people here. Hey, hello, my dear. Fine, thanks, my dear. Not for a big, maybe in 30 minutes. Oh, all right, my dear. Okay, that's fine. Well, it's a class in manji, but yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I will send it now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get a bundle, my dear. Get a bundle. It's cold. It's really cold. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just a few minutes, my dear. Okay, thank you, my dear. Mm -hmm. Right, so we continue. So what would this be? So the octan is going to be y minus y cubed over 3. And then you can write y to the seventh over seven y minus y cubed over three factorial. Over five factorial. Divide everything by y cubed cosine y. So that then in the end, it becomes y minus y cubed over 3, y to the fifth power over 5, y to the seventh power of a seven y plus y cubed over three y to the fifth over five divided by y cubed cosine y now the y minus y cancels out and therefore you'd have the y cubed that's going to appear there meaning therefore you'd have the limit y approaches zero pull out the y cubed okay but the sign is going to have some factorials there so you pull out the y cubed 
is minus one over three. Y squared over five. Y four over seven. And so on. So, and then you have, uh, this one is gonna be plus one of the three factorial, minus y squared over five factorial. which is divided by y factorial. So this is the limit So now at the end then you'd have So you can write up here So this is equal to the limit y minus 1 over 3, y squared over 5, y to the fourth over 7, Three factorial So you divide by cosine y But as y approaches zero This is going to be zero 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 so cosine zero is going to be one, so that you have minus one third plus one over three factorial divided by cosine zero, which is a one. Minus one over three, one over six divided by one. Minus 2 over 6, 1 over 6, which is exactly minus 1 over 6, and that is the answer. So we can see that the actual, the, so now I'm going to send you a table of these things where you can have all the inverse, all the Maclaurin series of sine, uh, cosine, tan, and their inverses. And the Maclaurin series of sac, cosecant, and so on, all of them. Because the truth is, they can bring a question there. And the question will require your reasoning. But any question on this one so far? Any question on this one so far? So... Then we have the following. Okay, we're already done with these, but also you see the answer is correct because they gave us the answer is minus one over six and that is what we got. Because minus one over three is the same as minus two over six plus one over six. So, Right. So now we have then the following.
then have the following. Um, any question? Any question? Any question? Right, I think that you're going to take a break. I know that we have not been very long, but you're going to take a break and then we shall be right back again later on in the evening. And then we shall continue in the evening to do more things. Um, because today we ran late because um, I was from another discussion. I think that was partly the reason. Okay. Right, yeah, our physics is going to be done, Nape. Physics is going to be done, Nape. That's okay. Yes, Nape. Physics is going to be done. Um, so... It's awesome. So we're going to have a discussion. I'm going to discuss it at what? 11. Let's try. Let's try to keep the time up. Obviously, if you are free. If you are free at that time. Because now we are trying to prepare for the next uh, test. So we're going to be doing all the, even those kinds of questions, the, those apply, those applications where you are dealing with polonium, carbon dating, the word problems, those differential equations, um, half-life calculations, and so on. So we shall be spending time on those, you know? We shall be spending time on those. So we shall actually be spending time on those. We shall be spending time on those. Right. Right, so we have that. Right, so we have exactly that. Okay, right, so we're going to take a break. Thank you so much for joining us. Until 11, take care. And yeah, you can certainly what's up, but yeah, our schedule time is 11 p.m. tonight. And then we shall do more problems. But we shall make this recording available so that you can just, you know, recap on this. But we need to go through all the McLaurin series, like sine, cosine, tan, arcsine, arc, cosine, arctan, arc, secant, secant, all of the all those functions you must know they are they are series. But also the series of the exponential, you already know. The series of the lean of the log, you, you, you already know, but we need to revise it as well. Okay. Thank you so much, dear. I know very well there's a short short discussion, but yeah, we shall continue 11 and do much more, even of those applications, problems. Thank you so much. Take care. Until 11 p.m. Take care and goodbye. Nape, Nape, are you sleeping? <laughs>